So if we think back to when we were talking about congruent triangles and congruent figures, the relative simplicity of triangles meant that there were methods that we could use to prove the triangles were congruent, just involving their three sides and three angles, that we couldn't use to prove that other polygons were congruent. For example, we couldn't use the side-side-side postulate to prove that two quadrilaterals were congruent or to prove that two hexagons were congruent. Similarly, you'll find that there are methods that we can use to prove triangles similar that we can't use to prove the quadrilaterals or pentagons are similar, and all of it comes back down to the relative simplicity of triangles with only three sides and three angles compared to other types of polygons. And additionally, what you'll find is that many of the methods that we use to prove the triangles are congruent are ones that we can use to prove that they are similar too. So what this video is going to do is go through three of the more common methods that we have to prove the triangles are similar, ask you to pause the video and write them down, as well as give you an example of what that looks like in each of the cases and take you through some examples of determining which similarity postulate or theorem we can use to prove the two triangles are similar as well as give you one specific example of a circumstance that you might run into that involves a little bit of special attention. So first before we get into some familiar ways to prove the triangles are similar that call back to proving the triangles are congruent we have one that's actually a little bit easier and it turns out that for triangles if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle then that's enough to say that the triangles themselves are similar so pause the video copy down the postulate for AA similarity is what we call it as well as the diagram below you'll notice that in the diagram below only one congruent angle is marked. See if you can find the other congruent angle that is there between the two triangles. Come back when you've written that down and are ready to hear a little bit more about it and then move on. As with other postulates that we've seen, this is something that we accept without proof, meaning that we just accept that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the triangles are similar. In this case, we only show one congruent angle, that's angle BAC and angle CED, but because angles BD, or rather that segments BD and AE intersect, we know that the vertical angles BCA and ECD are also congruent from the vertical angle theorem. And those are the two angles that we need to show that these two triangles are similar. Once we have those two angles, because we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, two congruent angles of one triangle means that the third angles in each of those triangles must also be congruent in order to add up to 180 degrees. So again, this is what we call the AA similarity postulate because we accept it without proof. We don't have to prove that this is true. We can use the AA similarity postulate to prove two other theorems about showing the triangles are similar. We're not gonna show the proofs of those theorems in this video. That's gonna be left up to you as part of your exercises working through similar triangles. Uh, but the first one is side angle side similarity or SAS similarity. If an angle of one triangle is congruent to an angle of another triangle and the sides including that angle are in proportion then the triangles are similar so go ahead pause the video copy down the SAS similarity theorem as well as the diagrams below that come back when you are ready to hear a little bit more about it uh, walk through how we know that the sides are in proportion and then move on to the next similarity theorem so very similar to the side angle side congruence theorem. In this case, we need two sides and the angle that is included between them. Unlike the side angle side congruence theorem though, we're not necessarily looking for congruent sides, we're looking for proportional sides. In this case, we have uh, sides FE and FD that surround and include angle E in one triangle on the left, and we have sides CB and BA that include angle B in the triangle on the right. So to know that the sides that include the angles are in proportion, we would need to know that FE and CB, that the lengths of those sides, create the same ratio as ED and BA, 4.5 over 3. There are a lot of ways that we could show this. One of the easiest, as you know, with proportions is to use cross products to see if those two products are equal, and they both do, in fact, equal 18. 6 times 3 and 4 times 4.5. So triangle FED and triangle CBA are similar. The final similarity theorem that we can use is also one that uh, takes 
some similarity from what we can show with two triangles being congruent, and that is the side-side-side similarity theorem. If the sides of two triangles are in proportion, then those triangles are similar. Go ahead, pause the video, copy the similarity, the side-side-side similarity theorem down, as well as the diagrams below. We don't actually need this congruent angle here. Come back when you're ready to hear a little bit more about it, then go on to some example problems. So for side, side, side for similarity to work, we don't need three congruent sides of one triangle being congruent to three sides of another triangle. That would tell us that the triangles are congruent. Instead, we need the sides to be proportional, meaning that the ratio of the sides of one triangle is consistent when compared to the corresponding sides of the second triangle. And in this case, I'm not going to write the proportion here because it's relatively easy to see that for each of the sides of ABC, we can multiply that side by 3 to determine a side for DEF. And that's enough to show that these two triangles are similar. So again, three ways that we can prove that triangles are similar. The angle-angle similarity postulate, the side-angle-side similarity theorem, and the side-side-side similarity theorem. Two of them very familiar compared to what we saw with congruent triangles, one of them new and specific to similar triangles. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do as a matter of practice in this video is to pause the video, name each set of similar triangles in the three diagrams below, and determine which postulate or theorem proves for us that they are similar. Go ahead, pause the video, work on that, come back when you're ready to see the answers to these, and move on to one more example of a type of problem you might see. Well, in each of the diagrams here, we are given exactly what we need for one of the three similarity theorems. So in triangles JKL and NML, which are the similar triangles in this first one here, we are given three sides that happen to be in proportion. The ratio of 9 to 6 for MN and kj is the same as the ratio of 8 to 12, which is the same as the ratio of, or rather 12 to 8, which is the same as the ratio of 10.5 to 7. And the scale factor here being 1.5. You multiply the sides of jkl by 1.5, and you end up with the sides of nml. For the problem in the middle, we are given two different angles for these triangles. The two angles that we're given are not the same, we are given a 50 degree angle, but we're given a 60 degree angle in one triangle and a 70, 70 degree angle in the other. If we found the third angle in those triangles, though, you would find that in ABC, that missing angle is 60, and in XYZ, that missing angle is 70. So this is enough with those angles to use the angle-angle similarity postulate to show that they are, in fact, similar, and that the triangle names in one of the many ways that you could do it, if you started with triangle XYZ, then you would say it is similar to the triangle that starts with a 70 degree angle, C, and moves to the 60 degree angle next, B, A. Finally, for the last one here, we have triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F. Uh, we see that we have two sides that are marked, BC and CE, AC and CD in those two triangles, and we have some intersecting lines, so the angles between them are in fact congruent by the vertical angle theorem, so this is something we can use side angle side for. And the sides that are in proportion are excuse me, uh, 10 to 6 and 15 to 9. Those ratios are both the same. So now we can say with confidence that triangle BCA is similar to triangle ECD. One last example of a triangle situation you might see is something like this, where we are asked to name the similar triangles and calculate the missing values. Uh, pause the video, see what you can do with this. Remember that what we know about proportional sides is related only to complete side lengths in triangles, not to segments. Uh, come back when you're ready to see the answer and uh, finish up the video. So here, particularly if we know that these are two right triangles here, and that AB and ED are parallel, what we know is that triangle ABC is going to be similar to triangle EDC. 
And what that means is that the ratio of x to 3.5 is the same as the ratio of the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle, 3, to the hypotenuse of the larger triangle, which is 5, not y. y is a segment in the hypotenuse of the larger triangle, ABC. It is not part of this uh, proportional sides. So we can use this to find out that 5x is equal to 10.5. and that x is equal to 2.1, and then that y is just the missing piece of AC. If EC is 3 and AC is 5, then AE, which is y, must be 2. So again, a quick wrap-up, three ways that we can prove that triangles are similar to each other. The angle-angle similarity postulate, the side-angle-side similarity theorem, and the side-side-side theorem, all going back to the idea that triangles as polygons are relatively simple. They have relatively few components, just three sides and three angles, which means that we don't need as much information to say that triangles are similar as we do to show that other polygons are similar.